and welcome to Challenge Solutions. My name is Caitlin, and this is the fourth episode in my series on using voiceover for iOS. In this episode, we'll be covering typing and text editing with voiceover. This video is going to focus only on typing on the touch screen with voiceover enabled. I will have separate videos on typing with an external QWERTY keyboard and a refreshable braille display. Voiceover has four different typing modes, standard typing, touch typing, direct touch typing, and braille screen input. I'm going to give you a demonstration of each mode as well as show you some settings that can be applied to each typing style. Before I demonstrate the different typing styles that can be used with voiceover, I'm going to show you how to access the typing settings. To do this, we're going to go to settings, accessibility, voiceover, and typing. Settings, two new items, settings, home, Accessibility, button, accessibility, heading, voiceover, on, button, typing, button, voiceover, back button. On this screen, you can customize the feedback that voiceover gives you as you are typing. I'm going to swipe through it and explain the various options. Typing, heading, typing style, standard typing, button. This setting will allow you to change the typing style that voiceover uses. The different typing styles will be explained in the next clip. You can also add typing mode to your voiceover rotor in order to adjust the typing mode on the fly, which is the method that I recommend and will be using in this tutorial. For a tutorial on adding and removing items to your voiceover rotor, you can reference the previous video in the voiceover for iOS series, which will be linked in the description below. We'll swipe right again. Phonetic feedback, character and phonetics, button. This setting controls the feedback that voiceover gives you when you touch individual letters on the keyboard. I have mine set to characters and phonetics, so when I touch a letter, it will tell me the letter and then give me a word that begins with that letter. For instance, it will say A, Alpha, or S, Sierra. This is a good way to verify that you are on the letter that you need. We'll swipe right again. Typing feedback button. This setting controls the feedback that voiceover gives you as you are typing. I'll double tap it and swipe through the options. Typing back button. Typing feedback heading. Software keyboards heading. Nothing. Characters. Words. Selected characters and words. These settings control the feedback for the software keyboard, which is the keyboard on the touch screen. I have my software keyboard set to give me characters and words, so voiceover will announce the character as it is inserted and the word when I press the space bar. This helps me verify that I'm typing what I need to be typing and cuts back on editing time. We'll swipe right again. Hardware keyboards, heading, selected, nothing, characters, words characters and words. We have the same set of feedback options for hardware keyboards, which apply to external Bluetooth QWERTY keyboards and refreshable braille displays. I have my feedback set to nothing for my hardware keyboard because I'm a much more proficient typist with a hardware keyboard and editing is much easier. Also, if I'm using a refreshable braille display as my external keyboard, I can simply read the text on the braille display so I don't need as much spoken feedback. We'll swipe right again. Braille screen input, heading, nothing, Characters, words, selected characters and words. We have the same set of options for Braille screen input, which is a way of typing Braille on the touch screen of your iOS device. It will be demonstrated in the next clip. I again have this set to give me characters in words for the same reason that I use this feedback style on the software keyboard. We'll two finger scrub to go back to the main typing settings. Type voiceover, back button. We'll swipe right from the typing feedback button. Modifier keys, control plus option, button. This option will be explained in the video on Bluetooth keyboards, but essentially it refers to the keys that are used to give voiceover commands with the Bluetooth keyboard. Keyboard interaction time, once, button. This setting operates a little bit like the double tap timeout that was explained in the voiceover settings overview. Basically, it allows you to control the amount of time needed to interact with the keyboard so you can lengthen or lessen the amount of time it takes to insert characters on the keyboard. Okay, for those of you who are sighted and watching the video, hopefully this view will give you a good representation of how each of the typing styles work. I'm now going to demonstrate the default typing mode that is used by VoiceOver. It's called Standard Typing. This typing mode works just like VoiceOver works in any other aspect of iOS. You touch the letters to select them in the VoiceOver focus and then double tap to insert the letters. You can also touch and drag. You can swipe left and right between letters. I'm going to demonstrate that now. Now I just have a blank pages document open and we'll type a generic sentence. Cap T. Tango. You heard it say T. Tango. We'll double tap to insert that. Cap T. J. Juliet. J. Juliet. 
H. Hoax H. W. Whiskey E. Echo E. Space. Space. Q. Q. I. U. 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 I. I. C. Charlie C. L. K. Kilo K. Space. Space. B. Bravo B. E. Echo R. Romeo R. P. O. Oscar O. W. Whiskey W. J. Julie N. November N. Space. Space. So you can see that I was just touching the letters and double tapping to activate them. You can also touch and drag if you get the wrong letter or swipe left and right between letters. This to me is a painfully slow method of typing. If I just need to type something quick, I will use it, but it's not my favorite way to type with a voiceover. We're going to switch typing modes now to touch typing. We'll use our rotor to do that. So we're gonna turn the rotor to typing mode. If you're unfamiliar with the rotor, the last video in this series was a tutorial on using the voice over rotor so that will be linked in the description for now we're going to turn to typing mode text selection speaking rate sounds braille screen input headings typing mode and we'll swipe up direct touch typing and again touch typing with touch typing you can still touch and drag to select the letter you need but rather than double tapping the letter will be inserted as soon as you lift your finger off the screen so we'll demonstrate that now just continuing our generic typing demonstration sentence okay Kilo. Actions available. So I put my finger on the wrong letter. I know J is to the left of K, so we're going to slide left. J. Juliet. Now to insert that, I'll just lift my finger. J. U. U. Comma. M. 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 P. P. W. Whiskey. E. F. E. D. D. Space. Space. O. O. V. V. E. E. R. R. Space, space, T, T, J, H, H, W, E, E, space, space, return, P, P, R, L, L, A, A, U, A, O, G, delete, G, Z, Z, U, uniform, Y, Y, space, space, D, D, P, O, O, G, T, period, return, delete, T, delete, O, 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 G, G, period, period, Space, space. So you can see that that is a slightly faster way of typing with voiceover, especially if you are sort of familiar with the keyboard already. I am a very proficient typist with a hardware QWERTY keyboard, so I'm pretty familiar with the keyboard and I can type relatively quickly with it in this mode on an iPad. But I still would rather avoid the experience if possible, especially if I'm typing something lengthy. We're now going to demonstrate the final mode, which is direct touch typing. I personally personally despise this mode because I cannot type accurately with it at all. In direct touch typing mode, the keyboard works basically just like it would if voiceover were disabled. I personally think this is only beneficial for individuals who still have quite a bit of vision remaining and can see well enough to use the keyboard. Or if you happen to have mastered the keyboard and can type proficiently, it could work, but I make so many mistakes with it that it's not worth it. Text selection, speaking rate, sounds, braille screen input, headings, typing mode. Swipe down. Direct touch typing. I will demonstrate direct touch typing now. Please note that I probably will not type anything coherent, but I'm going to do my best to type my name. Shift. Selected. Shift. Cap. Cap C. Char. Cap C. Charlie. Cap X. X-ray. Cap V. Victor. Cap C. Charlie. Cap C. Cap A. Alf. Selected. Shift. Caps lock on. Actions. Selected. Shift. Caps lock. Shift. Actions available. A. L. O. P. O. Oscar. Actions I. India. I. R. T. Tango T. Return. F. Return. L. Lime L. U. U. Y. Yankee Y. M. N. November J. To N. November N. Space. Space. So as you can see, I pretty much have to land directly on the letter in order for it to be inserted. You can touch and drag to some degree, but you can't just lift your finger and have it be inserted. You have to hover directly over it and then touch. And it is very difficult for someone like me who is totally blind to do this efficiently. We will now touch in the body of our document to have voiceover read what we've just typed. Body. The quick brown jumps over the lazy dog. 
Caitlin. As you can see, I left out the word fox. I did not mean to do that, but this makes for a perfect demonstration of how you can edit your text with voiceover. So we will double tap to take our cursor to the start of our text field. Insertion point at start of line, the quick round jump over the lazy dog. Caitlin. You just heard it say insertion point at start of line, so that means our insertion point or our cursor is now at the start of that line. We're going to use our rotor to move by words to where we need to insert the word fox. Edit. Document heading. Annotations. Bookmarks. Actions. Characters. Words. B. L. Quick. Brown. Jumped. We need to go to the start of the word jumped, so we'll swipe back up. Jumped. And that is now going to insert the word fox where we need it to go. Now I'm going to demonstrate braille screen input. Braille screen input is my personal favorite mode of typing on a touch screen. You need to add braille screen input to your rotor in order for it to work correctly and that will be demonstrated in the rotor video which is the previous video in this series linked in the description. Once you've added it to your rotor you just need to turn your rotor to braille screen input and then you can type on your screen. So we're going to turn to braille screen input now. Now. Lines, text selection, speaking rate, sounds, braille screen input, landscape, tabletop mode, six dot. So you heard it say braille screen input, landscape, tabletop mode, six dot. That means braille screen input is now active. It's in tabletop mode, which means the iPad can be used laying flat on the table as it is. There is a screen away mode, which I will demonstrate in a later clip. I personally use tabletop mode on my iPad and screen away mode on my phone, just because the iPad screen is bigger and tabletop is more comfortable and the phone screen is smaller, so screen away is more comfortable for me. To calibrate the dot positions, you're gonna use the six fingers that you're going to use to type braille. So your index, middle, and ring finger on both hands, cover them above the screen, and then quickly double tap on the screen with all six fingers. Dot positions calibrated. You heard it say dot positions calibrated. That means the dots are now under your fingers. So we will type fox. F O X. And to space with braille screen input, swipe right with one finger. I personally use my right index finger. Space, fox. To delete a character, swipe left with one finger. Again, I use my index finger. Space. And then to space again, swipe right. Space, fox. If you want to delete an entire word, you can swipe left with two fingers. Fox. We'll retype fox. F O G. Space, fog. I purposefully misspelled that so we could demonstrate the spell check and correction feature with this. If you misspell a word, you can swipe up or down with one finger to move through the suggestions and then swipe right with one finger to insert the new word. We'll do that now. Four. Dog. Fox. As I swipe down, you heard the suggestions. We'll swipe right to insert it. Space. Fox. Now we've corrected our sentence. And I'm going to use the characters feature in the rotor to check to make sure that there isn't an extra space there because sometimes it does that. Space, space, J, Juliet, J, Juliet. There is an extra space there, so I'm just going to tap the delete key on the keyboard. Return. Delete. And double tap because it is currently in standard typing mode. Space. Now we have corrected our sentence. I'm going to quickly demonstrate using braille screen input in screen away mode on an iPhone. This is being done on an iPhone 11. To use braille screen input in screen away mode, you're going to hold the phone with the screen facing directly away from you. So the back of the phone is directly facing your body. My pinkies are supporting the bottom edge of the phone where the side or power button is, and my thumbs are kind of resting on the top edge of the phone where the the volume and mute buttons are. It just kind of helps me have a more secure grip on it. And my index, middle, and ring fingers on each hand, my brailing fingers, are kind of curled around either end of the phone, hovering above the screen. I'm kind of gripping the phone between my palms with my thumbs and pinkies supporting it. I have the notes app open, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm in the text field. Note, text field, is editing, insertion point at start. You can hear that it said the text field is editing. We're going to turn our rotor to braille screen input, just like we did on the iPad. Words, lines, text selection, speaking rate, sounds, braille screen input, 
Landscape, screen away mode, six five. You heard it say screen away mode. You can use Braille screen input on an iPhone in tabletop mode, just like we did on the iPad if you want. You just have to rotate it so the phone is flat, but I personally prefer screen away mode on the smaller device just because it's easier to get all your fingers on the screen and it helps me be more accurate. To calibrate Braille screen input in screen away mode, the gesture is slightly different than it was on the iPad in tabletop mode. We're going to quickly tap once with three fingers on one hand followed by quickly tapping once with the three fingers on the other hand. So we'll go right fingers then left fingers really quick in succession. Dot positions calibrated. And you heard it say dot positions calibrated so now the dots are under my fingers. The gestures for braille screen input in screen away mode are the same as they are in tabletop mode on the iPad. You can swipe right with one finger to space, left with one finger to delete by character, left with two fingers to delete an entire word, right with two fingers to insert a new line, up and down with one finger to check spelling, and right with one finger to space and insert the spelling correction. Also it should be noted that you you can type in contracted or uncontracted braille. Even though I read and write braille fluently in grade two, I prefer to type in uncontracted six dot braille with braille screen input because it's a more fluid, less glitchy, faster experience in my opinion. And the spell checking features work better in uncontracted braille, but you can switch it to contracted really easily. A three finger swipe left will toggle between contracted and uncontracted braille, so I'll demonstrate that now. Contracted. So one swipe left with three fingers is contracted, and then if you swipe left again, it'll go back to uncontracted. Six now I'm just going to quickly recalibrate my dots, and I will type a simple sentence. And we'll turn the rotor to exit braille screen input. That concludes this tutorial on typing on the touchscreen of an iOS device using VoiceOver. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or send us an email via the contact form on challengesolutions.org. Don't forget to give the YouTube video a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm continues to know we exist. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another episode of Challenge Solutions.